whatever Kelly challenging you to a duel try it if you are faithful to it it will change your life in wonderful ways hey guys this is Kelly and this is my channel incredible anyway welcome if you are new this is episode 3 in the series how to cope I created this series how to cope because I know that a lot of people are having challenges dealing with the changes that are happening in this world and just how scary that things have been I just want you all to know that my heart goes out to you all and that's why I'm putting this video together, this video series together, because I've lived through so many things in my life for the past 15 years that are exactly the same as what people are newly living with right now. I wanna share some of the things that I have learned over time in this series. If you haven't checked out episode one, which is talking about seven ways that you can deal with the changes and the fear that comes with isolation. Episode two is talking about our focus and how that can change our circumstances and help us to cope. And in this episode, I'm gonna be talking about something that completely changed my life, a day that completely changed my life. And it was the day that I called the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Now I had called it for other people in the past. I have had friends, unfortunately, who have attempted suicide. And many of you know that my own husband, when I was married, attempted suicide and almost died. It was a miracle that he lived. I was feeling helpless, hopeless. I felt very alone in my life. I was very much isolated and my health was very, very poor. My marriage was in a very, very bad place and I just did not want to keep living. And this was back in 2015. I called the Suicide Prevention Lifeline because I knew that that was a resource that I had access to and I didn't feel like I could reach out to somebody that was a friend or family. In calling them, I talked to them and I, I talked to them about what I was feeling and where I was at. The person that I was talking to was a woman and she actually said to me, Kelly, have you ever tried a gratitude journal? And my reaction was, what? I Did you not hear anything I just said? Did you not hear the, the horrible stuff that's happening in my life? You want me to do a gratitude journal? And no, I hadn't done a gratitude journal. And so she really encouraged me to try that. And she talked to me for a while and I got off the phone and I thought, okay, I felt a little bit I'll say a little bit better. I mean, I wasn't in that helpless, hopeless place that I was because she had given me an idea even if I didn't believe in it. I thought, okay, how can I do this? And at the time, writing was not easy for me. So that's actually why I started to do videos was because I was doing video journaling, which is what I started before I started doing vlogging. I was video journaling at that time already and I thought, well, how about I do a short video every day about something that I'm thankful for? I am a person that can talk a lot if you know me, I have a hard time with not talking a lot. And so I thought I'll just limit my videos to 30 seconds. And I called it my thankful 30. So 30 seconds of me talking about what I'm thankful for. And I decided to keep myself accountable. I would upload them to the internet. And I didn't know really anything about YouTube except for it was a place you could put videos. So I figured out how to open an account somehow and I just started uploading thankful 30 videos. And actually that's how some of you found me, one of you in particular, who is the first person that ever followed me and commented on my videos. I did a thankful 30 every single day where I created a 30 second video. And if you all are interested in watching those videos, they're still on a different channel and I can make them public if you're interested. I can show you them. A lot of them are more than 30 seconds <laughs> because I just have a hard time not talking longer than 30 seconds. But it was the intention. I was making sure I was doing this whole gratitude thing. You know when you're at Thanksgiving, you go around the table, or maybe you don't do this, but my family does. You say things you're grateful for, but you say big things, right? You don't say like a little thing. You don't say, oh, I'm thankful for my pillow. You know, that that's not going to cut it at Thanksgiving dinner. But in Thankful 30, it absolutely cuts it. And I think that my first Thankful 30 was absolutely about a pillow. It was a pillow that looked like a monster. And there are other times where I was just thankful for my bed. I was thankful for things that seemed to be really small, but but in the long run, when you are thankful intentionally every single day, it doesn't matter what you're thankful about. Your perspective shifts. It shifts in a way you cannot know otherwise unless you are intentionally thankful. When you become intentionally thankful for everything, you realize how even those little things matter. For example, I have running water in 
all of my faucets really easily have running water. And I think about this a lot, that sometimes I'm like, oh wait, I, I left the water running. But I think about how precious that water is to somebody in a third world country. What a gift that running water is. It really does change your perspective. In the beginning, you think of these things like running water or the pillow on your bed as a little thing. But the more that you're thankful about them, the more that I was thankful about them, I learned that, whoa, those are actually big things. Everything is important. And maybe something that's little to me is big to somebody else. For example, I think people that are healthy take for granted that their bodies function the way that they do. And then I will say that I think that the people who are chronically ill, we take for granted that parts of our body function as well as they do. For example, I know somebody who has cystic fibrosis and a major part of what is not functioning well in her body is her lungs and the mucus that builds up in her lungs leads to infection. My lungs do really well, except for the asthma that I get, you know, when seasons change. Her cystic fibrosis is a terminal disease. Asthma is not, for me anyway. I often, when I'm breathing, I am so thankful that I can take a deep, full breath and I don't have to start hacking my brains out, coughing, because she does. It's just truly being intentional about gratitude. And I know that this may be surprising to people, but if you actually take this and I'm going to offer a challenge to you, I want you to take the Thankful 30 challenge. This is, this is, I'm gonna cry. It's that important to me. I really believe that this can affect your life in a significant way. And if you will somehow hold yourself accountable, whether you post videos every day and upload it to a YouTube channel that nobody sees, maybe keep all your videos private. You can do that on YouTube channels. Or whether you have a vlog and you tell them every day on your vlog, or maybe you write them down in a journal privately, or maybe you talk about them with your family. Maybe you do it as a group say, hey, let's talk about something that we're thankful about today. And we all talk about it and it has to be different every day and make it fun. Don't make it something that's a task or a chore because this is supposed to be a positive experience, not a negative. Oh, I've got to be thankful again. No, this is a life changing thing and it's only life changing if you do it and if you're obedient and if you hold yourself accountable and make sure you do it regularly, do it every day. I did it every day. I can't remember the duration, but it was at least six to eight months that I did it every day for a very long time. And by the time I started to pay attention and to ask myself, has this helped me? I was already having my doctor, my migraine specialist who's a neurologist said to me, Kelly, you are a totally different person. And being thankful and being intentional about being grateful, it, it changed my life. It taught me how to have a great life no matter what's going on because there's always something wonderful in my life that I can be thankful for. And even though the running of the water seems like it's a small thing, it's not a small thing. It's not. It's a big thing. It's a big, big deal. And you may be watching this and just be going, whatever, Kelly. I don't, I don't believe you. I don't, I, this, there's no way that being thankful is going to change my life. Try it challenging you to a duel. Try it. Let's see. Let's see. Because you never know till you try, right? Commit to doing it for a period of time. Commit to doing it for a few months. Two months. Commit to doing it for the duration of how long people are... Sorry, that was <laughs> my service dog's dreaming. Commit to doing it for how long people are going to be staying at home and how long businesses and things are shut down. Because we need something positive. We need to be thankful for something every day. Put a reminder on your phone. So at such and such time, 11 o'clock in the morning every day, you do your thankful 30. It will change your perspective. It will. And I think that's a pretty exciting thing. And being thankful will help you to cope during this really, really hard time in your life. This is something I have been so excited to share with people because this is how I learned that I could have an incredible life with debilitating chronic health issues. And that meant that I was thankful in the worst of situations. I was thankful when I was bed bound all day. I was thankful when I was in excruciating pain all day. It's not gonna be easy, and I'm not trying to tell you it's easy, especially in the beginning it's not, especially when it feels like everything is going wrong in your life. But if you are faithful to 
to it, it will change your life in wonderful ways. And I look forward to hearing how it is going to change you all's lives. And I'm just, I'm just so excited. Thank you guys for watching my channel and for supporting me by watching these videos. Share these videos with people who you think might be interested. Also, I've created a playlist on this How to Cope series. You could share the whole series on your social media accounts. We're all going through a hard time. In episode four, I'm gonna be talking about what I call my coping toolbox. Check out my vlogs, check out my other videos. We are going to have really great lives no matter what the circumstances are. This will end, this whole virus situation is going to end, but your perspectives and the tools that you are gaining in life because of this hard situation will serve you the rest of your life. Thank you guys for watching. Go live your incredible anyway, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. And remember, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> I'm a nut. Bye. <laughs>